Effective and coordinated movements require the kinetic chain to function properly. Any breakdown in the chain can lead to reduced performance, increased risk of injury, and pain. In the sport of discus, kinetic chain refers to the sequential movements of the body joints and segments, beginning at the lower body, moving up through the torso and arms to generate maximum power and velocity in the throwing motion. Throughout this video, we will comparatively assess the subject performance in relation to the exemplar's performance. Firstly, we will delve into how the exemplar allows for efficient and effective movement patterns, where energy is transferred smoothly from one joint to another, reducing the strain on individual muscles and joints. Discus can be broken down into several stages in relation to the kinetic chain. Firstly, stance. The exemplar has a lowered stance with majority body weight on the back foot allowing the front foot to be a free range pivot foot for the correct rotation to generate the most power and velocity. Secondly, leg drive. As the athlete begins to rotate back to the front, the leg drive begins. The athlete pushes into a deep squat on the back leg and explosively drives it into the ground. This generates energy that is transferred up through the body and into the throwing arm. Thirdly, the wind up. The exemplar winds up by rotating their hips and torso to the back of the throwing circle. During the wind-up phase of the throw, the athlete starts in a standing position with their weight evenly distributed between both legs. As the athlete begins to initiate the throw, they will shift their weight onto the non-throwing leg and rotate their hips. This causes the throwing side hip to rotate back and away from the throwing direction. As the throwing side hip rotates back, the gluteus maximus, hamstrings and lower back muscles begin to contract, producing hip extension. This contraction causes the hips to push forward and create a coiling effect in the torso. Fourthly, hip and torso rotation. The athlete initiates torso rotation by driving the non-throwing arm forward, which transfers the momentum to the throwing shoulder and arm. And lastly, follow through. The exemplar finishes the throwing motion by completing their action and keeping their feet within the circle. Now we will continue to analyze the kinetic chain. However, we will be analysing how different the subject's sequence is comparatively to the exemplar. We can already see that the subject's approach is completely different to the exemplar's. The subject does not face the back of the throwing circle to start. This results in them struggling with maintaining balance during the rotational phase of the throw, which can result in a loss of power and accuracy. The subject does not put much weight on their back foot at the start of this sequence. They are very upright and have too much weight on their front pivot foot, causing issues maintaining balance during the rotational phase of the throw. Not having enough weight on the back foot significantly impacts the leg drive and explosive power produced. The subject cannot lower themselves into a deep enough squat, resulting in an inefficient leg drive. Additionally, a lack of leg drive can also affect an athlete's balance and coordination during the throw. Proper leg drive helps to maintain balance and stability during the rotational phase of the throw, which is essential for generating maximum power and accuracy. The subject's wind-up is ineffective as they do not achieve the full range of motion. The wind-up only has a 180 degree swing comparatively to the exemplars that had a more rotation and speed, causing the kinetic chain to work in unison. To improve this, the subject can involve breaking down the wind-up into smaller, manageable steps, emphasizing proper balance and coordination, and receiving feedback and corrections throughout the learning process. Although the subject uses hip extension, the subject does not triple extend the hip, meaning they are limiting their hip, hip extension, ultimately reducing power and disrupting the kinetic chain. Having the hip triple extended helps to maintain proper alignment between the lower body and the upper body, allowing for a smooth, an efficient transfer of energy through the throwing motion. And finally, the hip and shoulder rotation. The subjects rotate their shoulder too early, which disrupts the sequence and leads to a number of potential issues. For example, balance, injury, and loss of power. 